Yeah. All right, we'll open at 6.04. We'll start with public comment. Kathy, you're up first. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> I just came to thank the board. I have been having a heck of a time last fall. I know you changed code enforcement officers, but thanks to a letter from the office, I do believe that my next door neighbors are keeping the lights off. I don't know whether it'll continue, but I know it sounds like a trivial thing, but I wasn't sleeping. And it was really rough. So I don't know whether it is, but I would like, uh, you know, sometime to look into the codes to have somebody make sure that they know that they're doing the codes. And, and real quickly, I don't know whether we're allowed to divide our houses. I don't know if you've heard about this with the affordable housing that, you know, you can take some, you know what I'm talking about? I got a little half acre up there on Slate Trail. I don't need, I mean, I could put a nice little cabin up there if I'm allowed. I don't know. Uh, but I would like to tell you that um, I do, I do want to fix up my house. I have a garage that's not finished and things like that. I certainly don't want to continue to do that if I got to get out of here. I don't want to go. I told you guys I've been here longer than I've ever lived if anywhere, and I love my home and I love my place. But I would like to know that it's going to, you know, I'm not going to have to worry about encroachment, you know. So, but I do want to thank you. I know you, you tried really hard and looked into it, and I appreciate that. And y'all listened to me when I had no sleep and I probably wasn't making a lot of sense. And I, you did ask me what the sheriff said. The sheriff said it was a code. You know, it's your deal. It's got an M instead of an S or a C or something in the way the codes are written. But I do want to thank you all for the time because I know you work hard and I really enjoy the staying alone in the woods there. But if you really need me for anything, I'm there. You know, I do do stuff. <laughs> But anyway, so thank you all very much. Um, if you can tell me if your response can I kind of expect that they're not going to turn them back on again? Have you heard? Do I know? Um, okay, so what happened with that was I did send them a letter, right? And they did give me a call, um, and I, I had a nice conversation with them. Um, they are coming up. Um, they may be there already. And um, what's happening is I'm going to go out there tomorrow. And, and I'm going to, uh, they're going to come here. I've never been out there. So they're going to come here and I'm going to follow them out. Tomorrow? Yep. God, I didn't make my heart go uh, <laughs> Well, anyway, so um, just so you know, I will be going out there. It'll be sometime tomorrow morning. Um, and okay. if you want to participate. Um, oh, I'm not allowed just property. I don't know. They got no trespassing signs up there. But, you know, if I'm your guest, you oh, know. Okay. Well, I'll, I, I, my <laughs> plan was to meet with, and well, if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. And I'm happy to go out and see you sometime. Thank you. Well, you can come and see me when you're done. Maybe, maybe I will. No, I'm not far. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe I will. So, so I'm going to go just, just look at it myself. Um, and just just try to, to see what's going on. What do you mean look at it? You're gonna say that gee, they can light your lights up on your no, property. You know, I'm just gonna okay. look at the layout of everything. According to them, they um, there's a wall of trees there, and I've just never seen it. So okay, um, well, I just want to go. If, I did, if it didn't bother me, believe me, I wouldn't bother you. Right, right. I yeah. swear. So I will hop over and see you me. after, um, and hopefully we'll we'll get it all straightened out. Okay. Uh, but as far as them being off, I did tell them that you had called and said that they were off. They don't know why because they didn't do that. So I don't know what I have story touched. I have not touched. Okay, but I did tell them that I would take them down, and if anything happens to me doing that, that it would be on them. Okay. Well, I'll I'll be out there tomorrow. So we'll well great. Okay. Well, I'll stay for a while, but since I had my piece, I don't know how much longer. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad, glad you're sleeping. Yeah. Well, you know I am, but it worries me because I never know when it's going to go flash. They were doing. A, Five minutes off and then 30 seconds, kaboom. You know, that's just ridiculous. It's probably a prison camp or something in Germany. <laughs> it was not. It was, it was just, okay. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> the person on the North Guilford Road, I hope that's the last thing I heard about. But that's kept taken care of. I don't, I don't want to take all the time. But thanks again for looking into it. Great. Thanks. Dick? All right. Thank you. Uh, do I need to stand for this or just warn it all? Um, I have received two and I'm waiting on a third estimate to redo the foundation underneath the Lakeshore House. Um, we will be seeking permits at some point, I hope this year, uh, a place to go with clean fill and possibly hooking up to the drainage box that is 
um, in front of the Weaver Foundation property on this side um, for, for putting drains, if possible. I didn't know how to broach the subject yet, but I, I know that there's a lot of clearances that you're going to need for that kind of stuff, including because we're within 100 feet of the lake and um, about um, encroachments on the sidewalk, and I'll have to talk to the Weaver about closing down that driveway for a number of days, if not weeks, during the summer um, to get the new foundation under there. But I wanted to give the town a heads up that um, once we accept the proposal, we'll be starting to see the permits and places to go with clean fill and other things, um, which may include tapping into the drainage system rather than training it into the lake. Thanks. <laughs> well, apparently that's legal according to the one guy that gave us an estimate. So if it's just outside groundwater being routed into the lake, I just, I don't think it's a good look. So I'd rather go the other way and put it in the drain um, for the town. Um, and so hopefully. Um, this is just a runoff water though, right? This yeah, the, the circular drain around the outside of the footing. Because it's running into the basement right. and we've got Standing ice is pretty ice, very clear, very <laughs> skatable in our basement. Um, I'd like to just do away with it all um, for the future of the Lake House. Um, my one thing. Um, my second thing has to do with it's a kind of a law enforcement question. Um, over the past few weeks, a um, few local individuals have stayed with us, and the staff and I are positive that they are both doing and dealing in heroin out of my building. Um, a number of couples have stayed with us where there's been a string of visitors and friends picking up and dropping off all hours of the night. Um, we've started denying people lodging if they have a local number and don't mess up with a good story and a friendly attitude on the phone. Um, I have called the Sheriff's Department twice, given them names, license plates, descriptions of vehicles and people, and they are not willing to come out. Um, state, state so, um, so we're just heading it off at the past. But we're, I mean, and I hate to turn away business, but um, if somebody calls with a flat affect or sound like they're already stoned or say that they'll be right over, we just tell them no. And we tell them that we're booked. And then I shut the doors and turn the lights on upstairs. So they think that there's people in the room if they decide to drive by. It's not a comfortable feeling, um, but when I've got um, hypodermic needles in my trash and my recyclables in my building, that's that's not good for me. It's not good for the town of Monson. And um, like I said, I reached out to the, the sheriff's department, and I get the feeling it's part of one of those they're trying to bring down big people, and they weren't going to show themselves so that they didn't scare people away from whatever was going on, but. I'm more than happy to scare people away by just denying them the service. Um, and I do so at, at my discretion. If I have to close down lodging across the board to not screw any laws about denying people service, I will shut down lodging um, just to keep that red wrap out of my place. So I don't know if the town can be any help with that. Or look into it. The suggestion about state police getting in there? Yeah. I don't have any contacts, but I think they might respond to it. At least you might have an intelligent conversation with somebody like that because they're always, you see it on the news almost every day where they're picking up members, you know, and they pick up one person and if they can get him through interrogations, squeal on somebody else and they can catch that. And I'm thinking that's why we're starting to see it now is because those two gentlemen from Greenville got nabbed and they're down in Dover and prison right now and maybe people are running scared and that's why they started like coming to us for a place to, to do their stuff and we're just we're just denying people and if somebody slips through the crack cracks i'd be happy to call the state police next time instead of the sheriff's department because um, i don't want it in my building and i'm sure you guys don't want it in this town so. and these were people from dover foxcroft from guilford so um, or, and so anyways, we're going to revise that term as part of the bicentennial. I'm serious. <laughs> there you go. That's good. Um, do you have currently have an issue, or this was just recently? You've been this was over the last couple of weeks, um, amounting to about five days of lodging nights for us. And, um, 
we just the, the one the last time we just told them when they went to the place. We stay again tonight and like hand us 50 bucks for like, you know, sorry, a bunch of snowmobilers from Massachusetts just rented the whole thing. It was a lovely lie. I wish I had a whole bunch of snowmobilers from Massachusetts. <laughs> um, and that has happened in the past. Um, but then and now when people call and like, you know, we answer the phone like, well, they trust me like can we get a room for today? We're like, uh, no, sorry, we're full. Um, because we just, it seems bad. I mean, we get calls from people, it's like, hey, we're passing through. We're going cross-country skiing. We're snowmobilers that want to stay. Like, they usually tell you why they're coming, but when it's like, can I get a room? I'll be there in like 10 minutes. We're like, nope. And especially if we see a local phone number on the caller ID. But some people have camps, and they don't have water, and they want to come and have a hot meal and spend the night and take a shower, they usually tell us that up front. Mm -hmm. Don't tell us it up front, and our local member, we're just, we're closed. But, you were going to say something? Well, <laughs> it's just brought to mind that uh, earlier in the winter, um, you know, our, our parking lot roof, the skiers park, down at Elliott's Hill Road, um, they, they guess the skier had uh, related to my husband, and she saw a, a needle up in the driveway area there. Yeah. And we went to check it out, we couldn't find it, but they just, we've gotten lights and, and um, kind of posted you know, video recording going through the process. I saw the lights on Saturday. I was I, I went for sunset and even rise out there snowshoeing, and I, I was walking by the shack and the lights came on, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or hit the door, like, no. I know, I need to do that, but we're just becoming a lot more vigilant in checking that area because uh, you know, so that's just your story. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Well, it brings all kinds of things theft, robbery. You know. <laughs> We, we can we can certainly bring it up with the, with the sheriff's department and others just as a general concern and see if they have any hopefully more constructive feedback. But it can't it can't at the very least it can't hurt them to hear from us as well. Yeah, I mean it, it seemed like there was something bigger going on and they weren't going to show up because of that. I don't know. I'm not like they said I don't. So I called them and left a message with license plates and prescriptions and people's names and credit card, you know, their, their names show up and we scan their credit cards, so I have full names on all these people. And, but it seemed like they were already aware of at least one of those people, and that was one of the reasons why they weren't coming. Which is fine, but I wanted to get it over with and get them off the streets because they don't want to. Some of them are like, oh, like, are you guys hiring? I'm like, oh, no, sorry, we're not hiring right now. Don't check the Facebook page. I'd love to, I'd love to, give, them, I'd love to give somebody a job because we need to hire a summer staff, and um, that's just not the kind of employees I want. We don't, we don't drug screen, and a number of our people use marijuana, and that's legal and fine. And but I just don't want to have to start like paying for drug screens or heroin and stuff like that on my employees. So. Yeah, they may be well aware of it. Yeah. Quick story, a couple of years ago, I used to walk around quite often to these meetings. And uh, there was a sheriff parked up uh, just up from White House on Route 15, uh, about a mile out of town. And of course, I thought I'd talk with him about the speeding in town. He was just parked sitting there. And uh, I had just asked him, I said, what's up to it? He said, oh, there's something going on here. And I started talking about the uh, Speeders, I introduced myself, and then he told me directly that he was actually in a spot, and there were other uh, enforcement people uh, situated in four different parts of the town, and they were all going to converge at some point in time and have a drug bust. But and that was probably two years ago. So who knows? They may be well aware, and they may be planning on something. I hope so. Yeah. But anyway. But unfortunately, there is a, a rise in um, the drug trafficking in the rural areas of the um, It's good to be vigilant in authorities. Bad. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you for your time. All right. Next up is select board reports. Eric? Um, the only thing I have is uh, I was alerted to uh, 
crops that were on our uh, plowed roads, and particularly the North Gilbert Road and Stewart Road. And I uh, went out there and I was actually thinking it was just going to be, you know, maybe rocks that were a quarter inch to an inch. But as you can see in that donut box, there's rocks that are six inches to four inches to three inches. And I actually picked them up because those were the rocks that I saw in the middle of the road. And uh, if you've uh, ever hit a rock with a tire and you hit it just right, it can actually travel quite a distance. So I try to spend my time either kicking the rocks off or picking them up. And the majority of the rocks, I could have probably picked up a bushel basket of rocks, but a lot of the rocks had already been hit and moved over along the banks of the road. So, but you know, that just to me, the biggest thing I thought was just a safety issue. Somebody could have gotten a rock through the windshield, and you know, the driver or a kid, or probably not a kid because most of the young kids, but. Be in the back seat with them. Anyway, just uh, I don't know what happened. Did you say you talk, talk to Chuck? Um, I did. Um, I, I asked him about it. Um, his, his phone reception wasn't the greatest. Um, so he did say that he, he noticed that. And I, I asked him, you know, could it be that we're digging down too deep, like um, into the ground or something when scooping, or are, are we into some? Um, a portion of the sand shed where, um, you know, perhaps it's old and just wasn't sifted well, or anyway, he didn't really seem to know where it might have come from. Um, Steve told me today that he went down there and kind of flipped it around with the sand that's down there and he didn't see any rocks. Um, so there doesn't appear to be any more. Um, so as far as what happened, I, I don't know where, but the sand's been checked and there's no more rocks like that in there. So I don't know what it could have been, whether it came from somewhere else or or what. But anyway, I just did ask Chad that when he, next time he loads the truck to just try and keep an eye out and try to notice if, if there's any rocks. But since then, Steve's checked it and it doesn't seem like there's any more. Okay. Would, would those rocks get caught in yeah, you know, oh, I'm sure if they're big enough. But on the other hand, too, it had to be making some noise, you know, right. coming out, mm -hmm. and, you know, clanging and banging. And, yeah. yeah. Right. Jimmy, your question? Yeah, well, just go on with what you're saying. This happened a few years ago. And they had it probably in that neighborhood. They weren't as big. And I suspect it's. I think it was just kind of near to yeah, Keep an eye on it. Anything else, Eric? No. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk trash. Favorite, <laughs> their favorite topic. Um, so I attended a Zoom Should meeting. Should I get my earplugs? <laughs> no, not that kind of trash. <laughs> oh. I mean, let me back up. Um, so uh, we're all wondering what's going on with our, our um, Camden facility. So I attended a Zoom meeting today with the um, Municipal Review Committee, which is the organization that's uh, made up of 115 uh, municipalities or members um, that all contribute, go in, you know, our, our, with our, our tip fees, etc., for our trash. So I'll just give everybody a little bit of background because this is can be very complicated. Um, so back in um, 2019, uh, the company called Coastal Resources of Maine opened the plant in Camden, and it was using the fiberite technology. So we didn't have to sort our recyclables. They did it all at the plant with their technology. Um, Municipal Review Committee, this is our organization we belong to, owns the land in Camden that the facility is built on. Um, so then we all remember the plant uh, closed uh, after six months of operation. They started to lose um, uh, their cash due to a couple of things. China was not taking as many recyclables. Um, they were waiting on uh, permits from DEP on, for certain recyclables um, because they didn't have those permits yet. They had to pay for the disposal of those items. Um, and in addition, Coastal Resource uh, Company 
it's kind of heavy on the upper management. Um, so a lot of, you know, their organization um, wasn't as efficient that way. In May of 2020, um, the out-of-state bondholders for the facility refused to close on a loan to Coastal Resources. So therefore the plant closed. Then at the end of 2020, uh, the bondholders received uh, three bids. Um, they were interested in the highest bid, of course, but that bid fell through because of financial uh, uh, complications. So since then, the bondholders have not taken any action and they haven't re uh, responded to um, a municipal resource committee's communication, which has been very frustrating. Um, to in the process of getting this plant reopened. Um, so uh, MRC, which I'm going to abbreviate, it's the Municipal Review Committee. Um, this was their meeting this afternoon. Um, and what they are doing is they are pursuing ownership of the plant. So they own the land, but they're looking to own the facility um, and, and with the intention of hiring an operator um, to run it, but MRC would have the oversight. So uh, MRC, a lot of lawyers involved in this, they negotiated with these bondholders um, to have this agreement, it's called an asset purchase agreement, um, that specifies that by June 30th of this year, the facility will be sold, um, and there are certain requirements for the sale, including it has to uh, go to a qualified buyer in other words, that, that potential buyer has to be able to uh, afford financially to operate the plant um, and also to run the technology of the plant. So I learned a new term in this. Uh, MRC is offering uh, to purchase this uh, facility through what's called a stocking horse bid. Um, no, I, I got to look that one up. Stocking <laughs> horse. Anyway, it would, um, they're offering $1.5 million um, minus the cost they've already incurred in the, um, in the facility. So in this whole time that it's not been operating, MRC has been keeping utilities on, they've been paying the taxes and all the upkeep on the facility. Um, so if, if there's a bid lower that comes in to the bondholders that's I'm sorry, that's higher than 1.5 million, you know, then MRC would lose it. I guess that's the stocking horse part of this. So um, if MRC owns the facility, they would need financing to about $20 million to purchase uh, for, uh, purchase and startup costs. Um, they're looking, they're working with federal state agencies on funding, but the collateral is the issue. So they're looking to get a, what's it called, a full faith and credit backing from volunteer members or towns, municipalities, those that can afford it. And in return, those municipalities, um, when the facility is up and running and producing, would get paid back. We're still working on the details of that. It could be in reduced tip fees, um, but that's a whole thing in process. Um, what it means for our town is that our tip fees wouldn't change. They're pretty sure about that unless there's some labor costs that, you know, because of cost of living and stuff would go up. Um, like I said, MRC would hire an operator. Um, they're hoping maybe some previous plant workers um, could be involved that know the technology. They would oversee the, the plant and they would have a lower upper management cost because of their organizational structure. So I will know more. They're going to have another meeting in mid-April um, and hopefully we'll a little bit more information by then, but that is it in a nutshell of what's going on with our trash plant. <laughs> and I should back up for everybody else that right now um, is at the Orrington um, landfill. They can't take on any more trash from the members of MRC, so that's why we, we're kind of putting everything on this um, to uh, restart the hand of the plant because there's no place else for our trash to go. So do they have markets for recycling? They do, they do. And they hold all of the previous DEP permits, MRC does, so um, they don't have to reapply for that. The operators would be good for that. 
but um, things in China are picking up, so the recyclables are going there. They did talk in a previous meeting about um, pulp and bricks, I think, and that there's new markets for that. So they've done their research, you know, in terms of um, the success of reopening this and the market for all of that. Did the, and is the plan to basically do the same technology that Fiberite was planning to do yes. in the first place? Yeah. And so then, they ran out of money. They were spending too much, but also like they didn't get permits for something, right? They get permits for like the bulk, the bricks or something. Yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, it was that. So the bricks and the pulp they had to um, pay to the services. But MRC does have those permits, or they do, they do. And that was the previous meeting I mentioned. Okay. This is an interesting alternative to how we've done things in the past. I know, I know. And and there's, you know, the question was like, will fiber right, you know, uh, support, you know, this, this purchase or whatever. And apparently this is like the, one of very few plants in the country that are using this technology. So they definitely want to succeed because there's other uh, states, um, municipalities that are interested in planting. Anything else? No, that's it. <laughs> um, we'll come to the plow stuff later. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention now is like, I did get some of the stuff on the solar installation uh, from the provider, so I'll start digging through that and we'll bring that up. Um, we can discuss initially in the select board meeting before we discuss at the budget meeting, should we decide to do so. All right, town committee reports. No festival committee, bicentennial committee. Is Sandra there? No, she's um, not. Okay. Um, do you have an update or should we skip that? Um, I know we're meeting next Tuesday, so um, we're getting ready for the April 23rd official celebration. So. Is there a march event? Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a what? A virtual march event? Uh, so yes, it was a pin dance. Pin dance, yeah. Pin yeah. dance, yeah. 26. Yeah. Do you carry the? I don't know. Really. <laughs> we have a meeting. <laughs> we were just concerned about the uh, mouse droppings. <laughs> <laughs> the gym, that's all. All that's going on. I think I'm going to get out of here. All right, beautification. Um, <laughs> March 29th, uh, Saturday. Um, Beautification Committee is sponsoring a uh, plant presentation at the Tiny House. Um, the speaker from County Extension is coming to talk about uh, native and invasive plants um, and kind of linking that into um, pollinator friendly gardens. Gardening. Um, so that's March 19th. And then in April, I'll pull up my calendar, um, we're going to have town cleanup day. Um, and more information about that. Cool. All right. Old business, dangerous building at 31 Water Street. Yes, so you all probably remember, this has been ongoing for quite some time. Um, so it was deemed a, a, a dangerous building and the, uh, uh, 31 Water Street. Um, and the, the gentleman was given several opportunities to, to take care of things and it just hasn't been done. Um, so it's to the point now where something's got to be done, and not only that, but um, we're getting um, some some complaints from neighboring uh, properties about rodents infestation and um, just a dangerous building, and the, there's kids hanging around out there smoking, and it's just not a good thing. So um, I I feel like enough time has gone by; it's already been decided. Um, I ha I have the thing here signed by the, all the select board, the findings. Um, so basically what just needs to happen now um, is uh, a motion to tear it down in a second, and then I can reach out to Arvo and see when he might be able to take care of that. I would like time to be able to send Mr. Lyons a letter and just inform him of you know when that's we're planning to do that in case there's anything in there that he wants to get out and give him the opportunity to do that. Probably most of the snow will be gone in April, so. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking, yep. And the, the guy had come here um, and asked, Mr. Lyons had come by and 
inquired about the possibility of the fire department burning it. I did mention it to Tim at one point. He felt like it was too close to power lines and such. So he, he didn't really seem to think that that was something that they would want to consider. So um, if he reaches out to me again about that, I, I think I'll just, well, I might check in with the fire department again, just to make sure, but I don't think that's something they're interested in doing. When uh, when we did Mitchell Street, I forget, did we go out to bids for demolition? I don't remember, but I don't think so. <coughs> I don't think so. Um, but I, I'd have to look into it to be to be absolutely certain. But I don't remember that being put out to bid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other discussion? Then I'll make a motion that we move forward with plans to tear down 31 Water Street. And um, we'll publish a bid package to do so. Or post a bid, a bid up, whatever the listing is called. No, I don't want to Mm -hmm. And notify the landowner. Yeah. Clean up. Yeah. Pick up whatever. Right for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Next topic is the snowplow contract. Um, I was going to let you take that one. Yeah. Um, it's all the same to you. So we had um, feedback about the condition and registration inspection of the, the vehicles, compliance with. DOT, um, you know, commercial vehicle uh, functionality, et cetera. Um, I made a number of calls to Chad, actually left him four voicemails and probably more calls than that, but finally got a, got a return call on the last, last voicemail and we had a brief conversation. Um, you know, in, in short, he confirmed that, well, what, he said that the vehicles were registered when, when the contract was awarded that registrations had since lapsed and not been re-registered and the uh, vehicles were not inspected. Maybe, maybe wouldn't pass a inspection if there was one. He knows that work needs to be done with the vehicles, et cetera. Um, we didn't, the conversation was not particularly constructive. So I just got the info from him and said, thanks. Just wanted to hear directly from you and we'll, we'll take it from here. So that, that's where we're at. Um, um, Marty reached out to the to the lawyer to get feedback on, on the language in the contract and um, what our options might be. So uh, I think where, where we're at now is I think we need to continue that conversation uh, on the legal front and see what the best path is here. I mean, there's there are very straightforward practical concerns given the nature of, of this contract and then also um some other considerations given the time of the year etc so uh if if uh, open up to other other feedback here but basically i think that, that's my two cents on where we go from here um you know zach wasn't or, or lawyer wasn't available to speak tonight but we can find another time yeah i think we're pretty well aware of the things that probably do not meet the contract as written uh, I think they've all been mentioned, but it is concerning because of the amount of money that we paid. Uh, if it's been three years and uh, some of those things weren't serviceable or whatever else, you know, we paid that amount to have serviceable equipment to be ready uh, when we had storms. So, yeah. He did say he was available the next meeting. I don't know if that's something you want to keep lining up to have him do an executive session. Yeah, I mean, since we're going to do the executive session, we also could do it before the next meeting, right? Yeah. If the yeah. schedule's all out. Yeah. Um, but let's, yeah. Whatever we'll works to do that. Up for everybody. Yeah. Um, in regards to the snowplow and contracts, I guess I assume that the town owned the vehicle. I don't understand how it works. 
No, so it's, explain it to me briefly. Yeah, no, in, I mean, in this, in this case, it's it's town by town basis, basically. But in this case, the contractor owns you. Uh, like Monson Public Works is on the side of the one plow truck. The small, the, there's, there are some trucks that we own, but the plow trucks that the, the contractor uses for the roads are his own. Uh, not like the sidewalk stuff and the work that the state does. Yeah, no, that's, that's us. Oh, yeah. so, so you're talking about something different. Talking about the main roads. Okay. Didn't know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next up is the ARPA funds update. Okay. So, um, Monson was awarded uh, $69,178. That, that was our portion of that. What? Uh, the American Recovery Act funds. Um, to date, we have received $34,589. That is half of what we were, what was allocated for us. Um, the rest will be paid uh, one year from the date of the first payment. So. Um, we received that first payment on September 24th of 21. So we can expect the rest September of 22. So that's where it all stands. So we don't have to apply it. No, it's all applied. It's been awarded, all that. Um, we're just waiting to receive it. We're just thinking about when, when that package was passed in Congress versus when the funds actually hit our bank account. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. That was probably passed in the era when we were wondering whether we were going to have any tax money coming in or whether we were all going to go bankrupt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, code enforcement position. Um, so it has been posted. Um, we have received uh, one, one applicant and um, several inquiries. So the ball's moving on that. Um, so I don't know how long you want to give it, maybe the 30 days or something like that to, to be posted. Well, the feedback from the public is that you're doing an excellent job. Well. <laughs> 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 I'm um, up for that. <laughs> no, so that's that's just where that is. So um, there was there was one guy who was pretty interested. Um, but he was a no-show for a meeting um, that was supposed to take place. And then uh, I got a call today from someone from Dexter who was just inquiring um, about the pay and you know what, how many hours a week it would entail. And so mostly <coughs> at this point, but hopefully it'll turn into something. Um, so I just kind of wanted to put a little update about that. Um, yeah. uh, trio training. Um, so I did email you all the contract that we received from our HR Smith um, with an explanation. I, I had thought initially that this one was kind of overkill. And um, so I reached out to Levi and reached back out to Anna and um, <coughs> seeing her response, I, I don't think this is overkill anymore. It's just basically going to be whatever, whatever it is. And she explained that if it takes 15 hours, you'll be billed for 15 hours. Um, so my plan, like, I don't really know exactly what this entails, um, this 40 hours of training, but um, I think I, I noted in my email that my plan is to have the, the budget prep list there, and um, that's what I want to focus on. Um, if there's other stuff that doesn't apply um, to us immediately um, or at all, then I, I, would, I will definitely skip over that. Um, and it's pretty clear <coughs> what we're looking for. So I do believe it's is time to move on that. Um, it's been long enough that, that the, the audit's been put on hold and um, you know, things are kind of starting to smooth down a little bit in the office um, so that I, I think that um, it's just time to tackle this. We don't want to let it go too long. So um, this, this is addressed to Tyler. Um, I believe either you or I could sign the contract. So if, if you guys want to move forward with that, which I think it's important that we do. How much is it? Um, well, what what the, they they charge one hundred and twenty five dollars an hour. What they their their basic thing that they do um, is about forty hours, and it says not to exceed five thousand dollars. When I spoke to Levi, he knows he is our actual auditor, and he knows specifically what what we kind of need and he was thinking that it would probably be in the ballpark of maybe 2000 to 2500 um, for just you know specifically what we need 
and um, as far as the timing of, of the training and stuff, I'm going to do my best to um, to schedule it when either the office is closed or I know Jade's going to be there. I don't imagine they're going to want to come schlepping up here for a half a day. Um, so whether we have Jade stay a little longer to, to cover the office or whether Elena can help out with that, um, I, I don't know. But we're definitely going to try to do our best to, to make it as efficient as possible and just get what we need and, and really no more. And Elena doesn't have this. No. Understanding. No, no, I've sh I showed her the list and, and she really doesn't have any more understanding of it than I do. Um, I mean, there's pages of, of documentation that, that they want, so. Yeah. I know we need it for the reports and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, but I don't know how common it is. I mean, I think they do run behind. I don't know if it's common with, with all towns or if it's just this town, but I, I know that we just the other day got the 2021 back from mud, you know, which <laughs> I, I just don't know if that's common or not. Mm -hmm. um, but we know the timeliness of a lot of things that have happened here. So it just yeah. could be due to that or not. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so if it's if it's all good with everybody, um, I'd like to get this sign and sent back and, and get busy on it. Um, you know, there's things things coming up, you know, like town meeting and there's another election in June and I'll, but I, I think we can you know, squeeze it in. I mean, if it's, if it ends up being 20 hours, you know, that's like two and a half days. So I'm, I'm going to say that, that hopefully we should do it and we should be able to squeeze it in. Well, learn what you need to learn to be proficient so we get everything we need to have. Exactly. Reports. Exactly. So. Yep. Cool. I'll move that we accept the contract from R H R Smith. I second that. Maybe we can have a monthly versus actual now again. <laughs> yeah. Well, we made some good progress on that today. As far as getting that, lots more to do, but I feel like I, I feel better just, just with where we're at. <laughs> at least it's been looked at. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, oh, I understand this. All right, budget okay. meetings. Okay, so um, we did make some headway finally, um, sorting out the, the numbers and um, where we're at with everything. Um, there were some. some lines with zero budget and a huge negative number after it and others with all the money in it with nothing spent and so um what we've been doing is, is getting that sorted out and i today we made some really good progress and what i'm proposing is i'm thinking that um we could start budget meetings um march 31st um if that i will get word out tomorrow that you know we'll be looking for budget committee members um get it posted there's a couple people i know that are interested i'll give them a call and, and a heads up um so i'm thinking that by march 31st uh, we should be ready enough to be able to start that process um so what i had planned and i know what we did last year is we we have the select board meetings on the second and fourth Thursdays, and then the other Thursdays we did budget meetings. So that would leave um, March 31st, April 7th, April 21st, and May 5th. I'd like to have it wrapped up by May 5th because I don't want to be too under the gun getting the town report printed and back to us and the, the warrant put together and all of that. Um, that's going to take some time. So that leaves that that's four meetings. And I'm thinking that if we can't get it done in four meetings, then maybe we could consider having it on a Tuesday or another one on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and, you know, just filling in where we need to. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be gone the 7th through the 22nd again of April. I mentioned that. Okay, so you would miss two of those yeah. four. Yeah. And I would like to see, you know, somebody in that group take over kind of the responsibility of checking into a few things underneath all the budget categories and just see where different towns of our size are at 
as far as you know salaries and stuff like that positions that we have as well as uh have members of the public works and the fire department come in and talk their aspect of the budget mm -hmm. that's another it. thing um we're going to um actually set up meetings um i'm going to have public works come in and i'm going to have at least one representative from the fire department come in just for us to do our preliminary stuff um, i'm also going to strongly suggest and perhaps even plead particularly with the fire department that they come to the meeting in which with that which you were discussing their budget because they've got a lot to say and i got a big earful uh, somebody kind of came in and unloaded for about an hour and you know it was all stuff i've never heard of before i'm you've never heard the town has never heard and that doesn't know and we we can't solve the problem if we don't know what the problem is um so there, there was a lot of things brought to my attention that i just didn't know about um so i would definitely like to think i think it's important for them to show up and you know it was helpful last year um tim's as well. right yep yes um so and then you know there's there's things and we're going to look um we're going to be looking into you know like the rules around spending reserve money and things like that because some of the things that that are needed they're they're big ticket you know and they're not something that we can just say okay we'll put it in this year's budget and raise the taxes because we just can't do that but you know we've, we've looked around at some of the reserve accounts we've familiarized ourselves with what's in there and i don't know the rules around that um but it would be some part of the conversation anyway and and part of making a plan um for for how to, to solve these issues yeah. um so anyway we'll elena and i will be meeting with them and then i'm i'm really going to ask yeah. them to, to come to the meeting as well can i be out of order for a little second yeah. in the warrant is an expenditure of almost twenty-two thousand dollars on one of the fire trucks, and it really doesn't have good explanation of what it is and what you mean what it is. Uh, that that's somewhere. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's on a slip that they gave to them when they picked the truck up. Mm -hmm. um, but it does that that statement that's in there does reference um, a PO um, or. But I mean, it doesn't have. Yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't no say what was done no to the truck, but yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'll. It's a big, big chunk of money. You know, you don't see something yeah. like that. No, I know, I know. Um, you know, and not by the time you get into it, but I, I'm thinking there should have at least been a discussion, or at the very least, a heads up before yeah. that was just gone ahead and done. Um, I don't think that was right, but anyway, there's much conversation about yeah. that. But now's probably not the time. We'll correct it moving forward. Yeah. Um, I'm generally traveling the off weeks in between our meetings okay so um happy to attend remotely but but if we um if we did do it either this like the same week either before the select board meeting or another day during that week i, I would have a much better chance to be here okay um did you say or some other day during that week are you talking yeah. about thursdays specifically aren't good for you um no, Thursdays are fine. Okay. Just that I'm, I'm often traveling like the weeks that we don't have the meetings. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that is something that we could try to do. Um, I, being a little newer at this, would may not have such an easy time um, determining how long these meetings might take. Um, when, when we did before, like, I think having a strict deadline of like one hour per meeting. Yeah. And Actually, last year I think it worked pretty good, right? They were broken well, down. It's broken into down chunks. into yeah. chunks, right? Yeah. And um, I think you we know, had like four different departments or something like I'm, that. I'm going to say three. probably um, the, like the um, the public works. I think had its own night. You know, yeah. things like debt service yeah. and could be with many other things because that's just not something we have any say about anyway. So it just is what it is. And um, Okay, so as far as the scheduling goes, we can work that out. Maybe maybe we could do that and just maybe have a budget meeting at five and then this meeting at six or you know even four thirty. And I suppose it would depend also on the budget committee people if they're available at five. Um, so that's something that we could sort out, I think. If we if we make a point to if we appoint the committee at the next meeting. Okay. Then we could rally everybody. That would give people two weeks. I think that's ample time. Cool. We'll get we'll post it on Facebook and the website that you know 
signups are, are happening now. And um, yeah, I think that'll be fine. <coughs> All right. That's it for old business. <laughs> Any new business? Was not, I thought we had a couple things in new business in the draft. Maybe it was just moved to old business. Yeah, well, I, as, as far as I'm concerned, when I'm doing this, if we've touched on it before, it's old business. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then in that case, we'll move into executive session for 1 MRSA 4056A personal matters. Does that mean we leave? You get to leave. Okay, I'll just, I'll just sort of thank you. I just, <laughs> I don't know if they're when are they call? Huh? What do you call my trauma? Um if you can. Yeah, if I can.